but he never mentioned what he was going to talk about. And he said, you'll see. I said, okay. Uh huh. And it was very well put together. The Holy Spirit used him mightily and Brother Marcel and Brother Rome. Uh -huh. And what he said made sense. That's one of the things that I liked about it. He went to the Word. Uh -huh. He read the Word. I wonder where he learned that from. <laughs> you better come on with the Word around here. And Go ahead. what he read, that's what we're going to do. Praise Yah. Is that mom? Or is I, I know anybody calling me. I don't know why they calling me. So you can tell that this had to be somebody that don't know me, huh? Yes. Calling me at this, this time. Uh, that's good. Uh, let's see before we get started. Give trying to give a, a few more people opportunity to join us here uh, this evening. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw the title of the lesson. Did you see the title of the lesson? All right, all right. Okay, so our teaching tonight ain't gonna be that long, but it just I just want to just put a thought in our mind, okay? Uh, thought in our mind this evening. So the lesson tonight or the teaching tonight is, uh, is Yah the only Savior? Okay, now think about that. If Yah, is Yah the only Savior? And the answer to that would be yes. yes. And so we want to look at that for a moment because we're going to find out some things tonight that maybe you, you never heard, but it's in the scripture, okay? And so I want people to understand that we're not talking about, because people already think like, okay, what he's talking about? Don't he know that Yah is the only Savior? There's no Savior beside, beside Yah? Okay, yeah. We're going to look at that tonight. And so I want to put that in your mind. Is Yah the only Savior? Let's go to Isaiah. I know time is going to fly, so I might well just go on and jump right into it. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43. And we're going to just, uh, I want you to read verses, uh, we're going to read verse 5 and 6, and then we're going to... Uh, Jump down to verse 10 and 11. Miss J, I, I, I will let you be my first reader. So Isaiah 43, verses 5 and 6, and then uh, verses 10 and 11. Go ahead. Fear not, uh -huh. for I am with thee. Mm -hmm. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up and go and give up and to the south keep not back uh-huh bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth uh-huh go ahead verse 10 ye are my witnesses saith jehovah and my servant whom i have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that i am he before me, there was no Elohim formed, uh -huh. neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am Jehovah, and besides me, there is mm. no Savior. Mm, you hear that? So beside him, he said there's no Savior beside him, right? So the word Savior is Yahshua. Yahshua. Yes. So, so here is the Most High saying that beside him there is no Savior, right? So that's best. That's just plain, simple of the text. Yes. Okay. So when we look at this here, because I'm going to show some things that's going to just just show you that's true, but that's not the ultimate truth. Okay. Watch this here. That's true. That Yah beside him there is no Savior. Now watch this here. Let's go to Isaiah uh, chapter 20. Uh, let's do chapter 29, Ms. Marvel. Chapter 20, 28, I'm sorry. Chapter 28. Because when, when we're studying a subject such as this here to have you to think, is Yah the only Savior? We have to begin to divide the word, okay? Look at the word from its context, from the, just not just one verse right here, because we take that verse, we say Yah is the only Savior. 
But I'm going to show you tonight that's true, but that's not the ultimate truth. Watch this here. Go to uh, read verses 9 and uh, 10, Ms. Marvel. Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are worn for weaned from the milk uh -huh. and drawn from the breast. For a precept must be up on a precept. Uh -huh. Precept upon precept line. Uh, upon line, line upon line. Here. A little and there, a little. Okay, so now we we see that as you're studying the text, we must understand that little here, a little there, a little there. So you're growing, right? So you have to be able to rightly divide the text, okay? When we're looking into the scripture, uh, because when you sh uh, when I show you what I'm going to show you tonight, you you you'll see it different. You're going to see it different, okay? Now, watch this here. Go to, uh, uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. I'm just building it up. Because when you hear certain things that you you have to be able to examine the text, investigate the text, scrutinize the text, okay? Now, watch this here. Miss J, we're going to read verses, Proverbs chapter 4. Uh, we'll pick it up in verses Five through seven. Okay. Five through seven. Try and get some more people time to join us here this evening. Get wisdom. Uh huh. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Go ahead. Forsake her not, and she shall she shall preserve thee. Love her. And she shall keep thee. Uh huh. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Notice that you know we're living in a time, guys, that people are getting information like this, getting information. But the problem is the information is not becoming revelation. Okay. But the text wants us to know that get. Get the information, get the information, but also don't stop there. Get understanding. We got to get understanding. When Philip met that Ethiopian in Acts chapter what, chapter 8, he's reading the scroll of Isaiah, and the text says, or the, the Ruach wants us to know that, that he Philip came up against the chariot next to the chariot, and Philip asked the Ethiopian, which was a black man, he said, Do you understand what thou readest? And so when we are studying a text, when we are studying this ancient text, it's not only getting the knowledge and the information, but we got to take the time to get understanding. And that's well that here we take the time to get understanding. And here we rightly divide the word, okay? And so notice that what, what um, Ms. Marva read in uh, Isaiah 28, where it said that who shall I teach uh, knowledge, right? It said he who was weaned from milk. Other words, he could hold his own bottle. Oh man, just think about it. Oh man, parents can't wait to let Johnny can hold his own bottle. Hey, Amen. I mean, and, you know, so we're talking about his breastfeed that now he's able to nourish himself. Now, so we see that in all our getting, no matter what subject, guys, we study, we got to get the information first. Get the information first, but let's get understanding. And I find out that 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 sometimes when people ask me something, they want me to just regurgitate the answer to them. But I'm not that type of teacher. I, listen, I, I I don't want to count your money all the time. I'm gonna show you how to count. Okay. And so if you ask me a question, I got the answer. But I'm a, I'm a teacher, Miss Marvel. You hear me? I want to show you how to how to calculate. You know, I want to be your GPS. I want to lead you how I came to this conclusion. Because why? If you take what I say and run with it, but you never knew how I came up with this here, and somebody asks you that, you're not going to know what to say. So that's why I spend so much time uh, uh, dissecting. You know, when you come here, it's like going into the lab. You know what I'm saying? It's easy. We can go buy a book about frogs and how a frog became tadpole, became a frog. Or we can go down to a pond. I, I, I taught that before, right? And we can go down there and catch the frog and bring him back 
to the lab and gut him open, and we can learn by that. And that's how it is here. We come in here and we gut things up. We we take our time, okay? Now, so when we study the subject and all you're getting, get understanding. Be nigh is the Hebrew word. Why is that, Pastor? Well, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter, four, let's do chapter 14. Chapter 14. I'm uh, finding a verse for us. Uh, uh, one verse, Ms. Marble, one verse. Why do we need to examine the text? Why do we need to take our time? Because when you hear things that is contrary to your, your uh, 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 understanding, then we have to make sure that this verse here, right? We have to make sure that we do our due diligence studying, okay? Are you ready, Ms. Marble? Okay, you want me? Uh, okay, Miss J, chapter 14, verse 33. For Elohim is not the author of confusion. No, he is. He is not. He's not, right? So if, if I'm studying the subject and, and the subject I'm teaching, if it's confusion about a subject, that is either first. Do we have enough understanding? Do we have enough knowledge that leads to understanding? You see that to mind? So if, if I'm teaching a subject that it brings a confusion, and we know that Yah is not the author of confusion, we need to continue to do our homework. Am I right? Okay. Go ahead. But of peace, uh -huh. as in all churches of the same. Okay. So now we know that if, if I'm going to teach this subject I'm teaching, we have to understand that that y'all are not to leave here confused because right. y'all is not the author of confusion so we saw the text that says that y'all is the only savior let me let me uh, uh, uh verify something else because as i say that uh this here uh uh, uh, uh is being done on the wing <laughs> i'm running doing this here i didn't even realize that it was a uh, uh, uh i was inside the garage and then my wife Came out there and said, "Yeah, you you know it's six twenty-five. Okay, so beside him there is no savior, right? Now, now watch it here. I want you to turn to uh uh uh, uh let's go to Second King, Second King. We're gonna read Second King, chapter thirteen, verses through. I mean through, uh Second King. Chapter 13, verses 3 through 5. Get a lot, I got a little tongue tied right there. Now, watch this here. We're going to, uh, uh, I, I know I said verses 3 through 5. Uh, let me see if I want to do that. Let's just go on and pick up in, in verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 1. Now, watch this here. 2 Kings 13, 1. In the three and twentieth year of of Joshua, the son of Ahasha. Now I just blank and move on. <laughs> uh, Jeroboam, the son of Judah, began to reign over Israel. Okay. Samaria, okay. And reign and reign and reign seventeen. Years. Uh huh. Go ahead. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Jehovah. Now notice the context. He did that was evil in the sight of Jehovah. Go and ahead. Followed the sin of Jeroboam, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, uh -huh. which made Israel to sin. Okay. He departed not therefrom, and the angels of Jehovah was nah, killed. nah. The anger. The anger. Okay. And the anger. Of Jehovah was kindled against Israel, uh -huh. and he delivered them into the hand of of Hazel. Now King notice, notice that, notice the context. So he's angry with Israel because of the sin, right? He's mm -hmm. angry with them. So now he delivered them into the hand of the enemy, right? Yeah. Go ahead. And into the hand of Ben Hazbat, the son of Hazel, all their days, and Je and. And Yehazah besought Jehovah, uh -huh. and Jehovah hearkened unto him, 
for he saw the oppression of Israel because the king of Syria opposed them. And Jehovah gave Israel a savior. Hold up. He did what? He gave Israel. Notice that. A savior. He gave Israel a savior. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So that they went out from under the hand of the, of the Syrians and the children of Israel dwell in their tents. As Notice that. Time. The same word. So when I say is Jehovah the only savior, I'm saying the, he is the ultimate savior, but he's not the only savior. Why? Because Jehovah will raise up men to deliver Israel. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, you're going to see it clear as I continue to go through this. Because what I want y'all to see in a nutshell, that Jehovah has saviors yeah. that he used to deliver his people. Mm -hmm. Could not we say that Noah was a savior? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Jehovah did not build the boat. He brought on judgment. But Noah was the savior of his household, right? You see what I'm, 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 I'm trying to show you because we put, watch this, we put all our deliverance on Jehovah when I got a bill that's due. And Miss Jefferson, I, I go to her because I know she's able to deliver me from this burden of finance. Are oh, you hear me? Now, Miss Jefferson, she paid my car notes. She delivered me, right? She saved me from losing my car. Now, she's not my ultimate savior, but she saved me from losing my car. Do y'all understand what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, yes. See, Jehovah is the ultimate savior of our family when it comes to salvation. But if some, if there are some things going on in my family and I can deliver them from drugs, I can deliver them from a savior from a bad relationship. See, we need to stop putting all the, all the uh, 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 savior on Jehovah. Jehovah is the ultimate savior when it comes to sin and delivering us. Yes, he can deliver us. Yes, he's the ultimate savior, but he'll put you in a place where you can deliver somebody. Oh, come on. This is what I'm trying to get. Okay, watch this here, Miss Marvel. I deal with people that, that have spiritual salvation, but they need to be delivered from their mind. Now, do Jehovah do... Do he do that? No, he bring you here so I can deliver you from your ignorance. Oh, I'm trying to deliver people from their ignorance. I'm gonna show you some more because I don't think y'all convinced yet. Go to uh uh let's look at first Samuel. See, once we see that that the house of study is established here to deliver people from oppression, your ignorance, okay. Right. Watch this here. Watch this here. Oh, I ain't finished. Uh, let's go to uh, First Sam. Uh, I say right. First Samuel chapter fourteen. Y'all, y'all have to bear with me on these here. Okay. Uh, let's look at uh, uh verse twenty one. Now watch this here. Moreover. The Hebrews that were with the Philistines before that time, which went up with them into the camp from the country round about, even they also turned to be with the Israelites that were with Saul and Jonathan. Uh -huh. Likewise, all the men of Israel, which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. So Jehovah saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto that evil. Mm -hmm. So hold up. So you notice that Jehovah used the same word. Jehovah saved the people. The same word that's used in Isaiah. He became their salvation. Jehovah saved them. Jehovah delivered them. Right. And then the battle continued to go on, right? So the people begin to continue to fight, right? Mm -hmm. Now, look what the verse said. Now, because of, of the sake of time, look at what verse uh, 45 says. So Jonathan goes and fights. And watch what the verse says here. And verse 45 says what? 
And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who hath wrought this great salvation in Israel? The same word. You see how we had this comparison? You, you, I'm trying to get us to understand because this Bible, the, the reason that there's no real deliverance in our community because we keep looking, okay, we're afraid to look to man that the most high bring to our community to deliver us. But we keep looking to him as our, our deliverance. Think about this because Jehovah could have delivered the people out of Egypt, but he didn't. He used Moses to be an instrument. Now, he was the ultimate deliverer, but he sent Moses to be his, 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 his deliverer on the earth to lead the people and to guide the people. Oh, I ain't, I ain't finished. Watch this here. Watch this here. Now, go to uh, First uh, Samuel. Y'all still there, right? Uh, chapter 19. Uh, let's start at verse 1. First Samuel 19, 1. Uh -huh. And Saul spec to Jer Jer uh, Jonathan, Jonathan uh -huh. his son, and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan... Saul's son delighted much in David, and Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself under the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee uh -huh. and what i see that i will tell thee and jonathan spat good of david unto saul his father and said unto him let not the king sin against his servant against david because he has not sinned against thee huh. and because his works have been to thee to to, to thee were very good for he did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine and Jehovah worked a great salvation for all Israel. So we see again that Jehovah is a deliverer, right? So 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 I'm not saying he's not. What I'm saying, he is the savior, the ultimate savior. Now we're gonna see this even clearer because we run out of time. Let's go to uh uh I'm gonna show you one that that really stands out. Uh, I probably should have one last. Let's go to uh, the book of Judges. Okay? The book of Judges. Now, in the book of Judges, they're going to use a different word. Okay? So I'm going to have to give it to you. You'll see it when you get there. Okay? Uh, uh, oh, let's go. Uh, so Israel, we're in chapter 2. And Israel... It says, verse 13, Miss J, verse 13. Pick it up in verse 13. Now, the word Yasa or Yahshua is, is the same scroll number, 34, 67. Okay? Now, watch this here. Judges 2, 13. And they forsook Jehovah and served Baal and Asherah. Uh -huh. And the anger of Jehovah was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. That's a teaching right there, but I ain't touching that. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of Jehovah was against them for evil. Uh -huh. As Jehovah had said, and as Jehovah had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Okay, but look what happened, verse 16. Nevertheless, Jehovah raised up judges. He did what? He raised up what? Judges. He raised up judges, a man, a human being, to do what? Which delivered them out of Wait, Hold up. Who delivered him? The judges. The judges delivered him. Why? 
Why Jehovah didn't step in and just deliver the people? Because he's trying to show us a pattern. Our deliverance for us as a people is in our community. And we have been so beat down that we don't trust our leaders. All leaders are not corrupt. Do y'all understand? Jehovah would raise up a leader. I used to joke about it, but I even understand it more now that, that I'm the black Moses of my family. Now, if they don't want to come out of Egypt, that ain't my fault. But Jehovah is the ultimate savior. Mm -hmm. But Jehovah will raise up other saviors because the word savior, a deliverer is only meaning one. I mean, a savior only mean a deliverer. Mm -hmm. So I can say I'm a savior because I'm delivering you from your ignorance. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Read verse 16 again. There we go. Nevertheless, Jehovah raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hands Look at of that. those that spoiled them. Do you them. see that? So now we know in Isaiah that, that he said, beside me, there's no savior. The same word. Okay. Now, I want to keep this in mind. I say that Jehovah is the ultimate savior. But when it comes to being oppressed in your natural man, your hope will raise up. If you can able to deliver your family from their finance struggle and you do it, you became their savior. Huh? You give your, your kidney or something out of your body to your family member, you became their savior. But your hope is the ultimate savior. That's what I'm trying to get us to see. So people have to understand that 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 you look to me, okay? If if Jehovah ain't gonna deliver you from your ignorance, he use a man to do it. Yeah, well. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say? So if I'm the one that been raised up at, at such a time as this here, and you ignore me and my family, then you don't have nobody to blame for your ignorance but yourself. That's right. That's what I'm trying to get you to see here. Now let's go to Judges chapter three. Judges chapter 3. We'll pick it up in verse 7, Ms. Marble. 7 through 9. Now watch this here. Judges 3, 7. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Jehovah, and forgot Jehovah their Elohim, and served Belm and Groves. Therefore the anger of Jehovah was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushion. We ain't even <laughs> dealing with those names, so let's jump down. So okay. so he sold them mm -hmm. into abundance, right? right? Go ahead, verse and 9. And the children of Israel cried unto Jehovah, uh -huh. then Jehovah raised up a <laughs> Do y'all see what I'm trying to tell y'all? Anything that, listen, he raises up men to deliver his people. That's what I'm trying to get us to say. So when people say, you ain't God, I'm like, no, I didn't say I'm God, but I'm a savior to this generation. Yes. So my part of savior is deliver you from your ignorance. Right. You, 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 see, you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So every time that the people got in trouble, did the most high deliver them? No, he raised up a deliverer. It's powerful right here. Let's look at another one. Somebody. Huh? He did through somebody. That's right. Let's look at another one. Let's go to uh let's see where I'm at. I'm 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 still there. Uh uh Acts, I'm sorry, uh uh chapter eight, verse twenty-two. Yeah, yeah, still the same book. So we can actually see that the book of Judges, we can see that the most high using man to be part of his deliverance. Mm -hmm. Uh twenty-two. Then the men, then the men of Israel. Is there? So Just uh, uh, give that one. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also. For thou hast delivered us from the hand Come on, of do you, the same word, guys. The same word. 
So when Isaiah said that, that when the Most High said, beside me, there's no Savior, he's talking about the ultimate Savior. But I, I know I didn't prove my case right here. Yeah. So I know that probably threw somebody loop when they, you know, it's easy for left us here. It's easy for us to say, oh yeah, Yah is the only savior, and we leave it like that. But you find yourself in a situation and you still waiting on Yah, like the man in the ocean, right? <laughs> Y'all know the story. He's waiting on Yah to deliver him. And Yah sent people by his way, but he's still waiting on Yah. Come on now. People, people frown at me when I say, listen, I don't care what you feel about the president trunk. If he if he write a check and send it here, it's gonna get cash. Thank you. Huh? I wouldn't care if the Ku Klux Klan sent a check here, it's gonna get cash. Because why? The heart of the king or man is in the hand of Yah, and he could touch anybody's heart. That's right. Because he can. He's no special person. Because oh, why? Why is that? Because he said the silver and gold is mine. Yes, he did. <laughs> And Miss Marvel, we forget about the scripture that say that the treasure of the righteous is stored up, huh? Huh? I, I mean, the treasure of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And then, but when a when a when a wicked man send you something, you was ah, oh, I want to know. You just said in the verse that the treasures, huh, of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And you frown when I said, let it, let him send some money here. Watch what happened. Uh, let's look at another one. Got this one here. Uh, well, man, hold on, hold on, hold on for a second. Uh, well, what, what was it? Let me get back there. But y'all see it, right? You see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's look at a a, a couple more, and then we're gonna shut this down. Same same book, chapter ten. Chapter Uh, uh, just verse verse twelve, for the sake of time, and you verse can read. 10, yeah, yeah. The Zen, the Zenadians, Zidonians, Zeno, the, mm -hmm. you know the name. Uh, uh, <laughs> I just can't get that. Also, and the. Uh, Amalekites uh -huh. and the Moist and the You can't tell me these ain't brothers. Did oppress you, uh -huh. and you cried to me, and I delivered. Oh, you see that? Now you mm -hmm. read the story. He say, "I deliver you." Mm -hmm. So once again, we I have proved to you that Jehovah is the ultimate savior, right? But yet he do raise up yeah. men who are delivered and under the same title. Of office as a savior. Yes. Do y'all see that now? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. We're about to land this thing. Uh, the verse I want to do right here. We'll pick it up in verse uh, 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 16. Verse 16. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moshe stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out he, of the He hand. did what? That's the word for Savior. So they're saying that this, this Egyptian, which we know Moses, saved us. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Saved us. So we I have shown you that yes, Jehovah is the ultimate savior, but yet I have shown you with the same word that he raised up men, mankind. When I say man, I'm uh, male and female, to be a deliverer. Mm -hmm. 
You see, see what I'm talking about? Yeah. So when people come here, their ultimate savior for salvation is Jehovah. But yet you're coming here to be delivered of your ignorance. Uh -huh. To learn truth about life. Yeah. You see, I'm saving you. I'm delivering you. Okay, when you find yourself in a situation that you're able to help your family member, you save them. You are delivering them. Ah, okay. You know what I'm talking about? So I'm trying to get y'all to under, understand. You see, the most high is the ultimate savior. But if you're able to deliver your family member from a situation, abuse, abusive relationship, you save them. You see what I'm talking about? Now, let's go to uh, Matthew. Matter of fact, let me see, I might go somewhere else. I might go somewhere else. Okay, y'all there? Okay, now Matthew chapter 1. Okay, Matthew chapter 1. Now, watch this here. We know the story Joseph and Mary, right? Uh, just gonna read a few uh, verses. So, Joseph thought about putting Mary away, but the angel came in verse 20 and 21, Ms. Marvel, verse uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Jehovah appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the royal cockadish. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua, but he shall save his people mm, from their that? sins. From our mm. sins. So we see here that the text wants us to know the mission of Yahshua. He's our savior. He saves us from our sins. You see that? So if Yah is the only savior, he said beside me there's no other savior. And so only Yah can save us from our sins. And here is the angel said that Yahshua shall save us from our sins. What is the angel saying? That Yahshua is Yah manifest in the flesh. Just that simple. Just that simple. Let me look at a few more. Then we're going to uh, uh, watch this here. Let's go to Titus. Titus. Titus, Titus, Titus. Okay, Titus chapter uh, chapter one. Titus chapter one. Um, we'll pick it up in verse three. I mean, sorry, two. In hope of eternal life. Don't even worry about that verse. Let's jump down to verse four. Okay. To Titus, uh -huh. my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from Elohim the Father unto Jehovah, Yeshua HaMashiach, our, our Savior. Savior. Our Savior. You see how we see that Yah is the ultimate Savior, but you see how Yeshua, notice the picture in the book of Judges. We saw Yah raising up men to deliver his people, right? So now, could you say that Yahshua is the ultimate savior? Absolute. Absolute. Who raised him up? The most high. So if the man, if mankind neglect the salvation that Yah sent to us, there's no other savior. There's no other deliverer. It's very important that we understand. So Yah... Send Yeshua to deliver us from what? Our sins. There's no other deliver. You can pass up all the religion in the world. 
if Yah only sent one, Yahshua is the ultimate salvation for mankind. Uh, turn over to Titus. I mean, I'm sorry, First Timothy. Just go left. I hope this is making sense, guys. Watch this here. We'll pick it up in First Timothy chapter two, and we'll go one through uh, 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 six. One through six. First Timothy chapter two, one through six. Exalt therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men mm -hmm. for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life uh -huh. in all godliness and honesty come on but this is a good and acceptable in the sight of elohim our savior watch this here who will have no what he said no what you said Elohim. This is good and acceptable in the sight of yes. Elo Elohim, yes. our what? Savior. Our Savior. Mm -hmm. I thought Yeshua was our Savior. Mm -hmm. So you see how to, if you read line upon line, mm -hmm. you see? Go ahead. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of truth. Watch this. There is one Elohim and one meditator. Mediator. Uh, mediator. Uh -huh. Between Elohim and man, the man Yeshua Mashiach, uh -huh. who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In due time. So notice what the text wanted to know that Elohim is the ultimate savior, but he gave Yeshua comes on a mission to to deliver all mankind, right? From what? From our sins. He didn't come to fill your bank account because that's what not what you was liking. Okay, we were spiritual bankrupt. And so the mediator, the mediator between Yah and man is Yahshua. You can't go around him. You can't go over him. You must go through. He is the door. Do that make sense? This would take me somewhere else, but... Hold on for a second. Let me check this out first. Let me check this out before I tell y'all to turn now. Let's see, do I want to go there? I'm trying to land, trying to land this plane. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I don't, I don't want to go there. But let's go to Acts then. Acts, Acts, Acts chapter uh, four. Just try to put the recipe together. Hmm. Listen to what Peter says. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. One verse. Neither is there salvation in any other, hmm. for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. See that? So now we see the only name that we have is the Savior. So what I want y'all to see is that, yes, the Most High is the ultimate Savior. He is the ultimate Savior. But yet we see in the text that I show you that the Most High raised up other people to be part of a deliverance. Deliverance, okay? And that's what I want you to see. Now, I want to close out on this verse here uh, since you're in Acts. In Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, we know the story with uh, uh, Peter uh, and Cornelius, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that Cornelius was praying. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us, and I'm going to pick it up in verse 2. Uh, I landed mm -hmm. in, in Acts chapter 10, verse 2. And this is about Cornelius. Mm -hmm. It says he was a devoted man, one that feared Elohim with all his house, which gave much alms to the poor and prayed to Elohim always. Verse 3. He saw in a vision the evidence about the ninth hour of the day and the angel of Elohim coming uh, into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, master? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before Elohim. Now watch this here. 
What do verse 5 say? And now do what? Send men to Joppa mm -hmm. and, and to do what? Call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Now, watch this here, because you know, you, 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 we're on your own. So now, Cornelius, we know that Cornelius and his whole house got saved. Yeah. So why couldn't Yah just save his whole house by himself? Why he had to send Peter? You see, nothing about he could have, couldn't even marvel. He, he's the ultimate savior, but because he ordained it, that he's going to work through his man. We are co laboring with him. Y'all, we need to understand that Yah works with his man, his creature, to bring deliverance to mankind. You understand? So we are in the delivery business with him. Okay, in closing, did not Yahshua raise Lazarus from the dead. Yeah. Peter and them couldn't do that. He ultimately delivered him. Yeah. But who had to go undressing? Mm -hmm. Peter and them did. Mm -hmm. He was raised from the dead, but was him his mom, but he was still bound. Yeah. Yeah. So Peter he said, now go mm -hmm. unbound him. Go see, y'all say, I'm going to raise him up, but you got to deliver them. From their addiction, from their whatever they are going, how by the truth you shall know the truth, and the truth said what? Make, Make you free or set you free. That's all I got. I'm gonna stop right there. I think that's enough. What you got, Miss Jake? So the apostles and the people that wrote the New Testament and us uh -huh. knowing the truth. We're all deliverers. Yes. When listen, what I'm saying. So now we saw. So you, uh, let's say this here, and just break it down to you. See your family or the city is in a situation, and if the city is any kind of situation, let's say finance situation, and you able the city about to go down, and you able to write a check, you deliver the city. Any way that you deliver a person out of situation, you we just say uh, uh, thank you or or we we'll say but not thinking, man. Thank you for saving me. But we're not thinking as you save me from my sin or what a deliver. Yeah, you deliver me. I saw you in a bad relationship, and 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 and, and then we plan your escape. I deliver you. So when y'all. Why? Because they use the same word for uh, uh, when y'all said that beside me there's no savior. The exact same word. So y'all raise up saviors in Israel to deliver his people. Think about that. And so we have to understand that if somebody is in, in the house and we're in a situation and that person, we, we need finance. And this person able to deliver us from that finance burden, they they saved us from it. They saved us from the lights getting turned off. They saved us from the water bill. You know what I'm saying? Come on, anything like that, but we're not thinking like that. Go ahead. How do you keep them from depending on you to do that all the time? Okay, good, good point. Okay, so now when you look at it, you have to determine. Okay, now watch this here. When when you let's say that. I got a son, okay, and he know I got money, right? So I make a statement, right? And I know he's 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 not doing things th that's going to get him in trouble, right? He he, okay, let's use this here. He speeds a lot. He he, he speeds. I say, son, listen, I'm gonna pay this ticket this time, but I'm saying I'm not paying no more tickets. I'm I'm a, I'm a deliver. Why? Because he didn't go pay the ticket and get guess what? Now he got a. A warrant. He come to me and say, Dad, they say if, if I don't get this money today, they're going to lock me up. So I deliver him from going to get locked up. But I say I'm not going to do it no more. If you get a ticket, you better pay it. So now what I'm saying, Miss Marva, I made it known to him. I cannot get mad at him if I never made it known to him. So I made it known to him. Now I told you, so when when he get his butt in a jam, I, I told him. So it, when we find a situation like that, 
then you make it known to, to the person, hey, this is the last time I'm going to do that. Because you see the person use you as a crutch. And even if even if your fault that you've been doing it for years, well, it's come a time to say, I'm not doing it no more. That's all. And you got to have the courage, watch here, to deliver yourself from them. <laughs> Y'all got to understand, a lot of people don't need to be delivered from the devil. They got to be delivered from human beings who act like devils. So did they answer your question? All right, all right. Anybody else? It's good. Anybody got any question based on the lesson tonight? Let me see any questions out there. Uh, good to see you, Pastor Jay. All right, we just were uh, asking the question. Well, uh, for those that was coming in late, we were dealing a uh, 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 a subject on uh, Isaiah forty-three, where the Most High said that that beside Him there was no other Savior. And so that that's I wanted you to see that yes, the Most High, He's the ultimate Savior. But I show you tonight, if you go back and listen, that I show you that that the same word is being used in Judges and other places that. You, that the Most High will raise up men to deliver you, or many times in the scripture, to deliver his people. So when I say that the Most High is the ultimate Savior, but also in the book of Judges and many other places, he raised up deliverance man to deliver his people out of a situation and you might be in a situation right now that you need to be delivered and you know family members in your family who can deliver you from the situation that you're in and i pray that that person won't won't hold it against you because they did did it before but if they still have the power to do it again, just ask them. Just be honest. Listen, um, I ain't, listen. I just need you to do this for me one more time. I, I, listen, and that's be it. So if you and I are in a position to deliver somebody, and you angry with them because of some way, and you have the power, but you won't because you mad. Yeah, you probably gone and pray about that. Just go on and pray about that because I don't, I don't know your situation. And so, but I want you to see tonight that you can be in a position that you can deliver somebody you can be their savior amen so that was the lesson i wanted to show tonight father we bless you again we thank you that you are the ultimate savior that you are the one that deliver us you send yahshua hamashiach <clears throat> to be the deliverer of all mankind from our sins so we bless you father we bless you we thank you father that if us in the house those who are watching if we find ourselves not if no when we find ourselves in a situation, Father, and, 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 and we have the power to deliver a family or friend or people, that may you give us that power. May you yeah. lead us and guide us that we'll recognize, yeah. recognize that you put us in this situation to be a savior, to be a deliverer. We give you all the praises, all the glory, in the mighty name of Yeshua, I mean and I mean. Israel, may you have a blessed thing keep thee. May you have a make his face shine upon thee and be glorious to thee. May you have a lift up come upon thee and give thee peace. May you have a destroy all the chaos in your life in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. Thank y'all for tuning in. As y'all can see, I was coming in sweating. My brothers and sisters, the most I say the same. We'll see you back here this Thursday. Amen, amen. All right.